Okay, now that's great, but what happens if you wanted to say, move this way? I want to say, I want point number one, number 10, number 19, number 28, etc. Well, that's a little bit more difficult if I have to move through the points as they're organized in one big long list, right? So we want to have a more hierarchical way to describe how things are organized in Grasshopper. Okay, so this brings us to data trees, all right? This is the diagram that uh, David Rutten um, created to describe what data trees are, right? Essentially, uh, and we're not going to go into all of it right now, we're just going to think about how there's an analogy between how things are stored in Grasshopper and how they might look, right? Here we have a data tree. It's represented just like a tree, right? There's a trunk. It starts here, it grows, right? it splits into different branches a few times, and then at the end we have these um, collections of different colored circles that are the leaves. Right? So this is the level of the list, and then this corresponds to how we might be able to see the data structured in a panel. Okay, so there's some numbers floating around here that we're going to come back to. What, we, what we've done thus far is identify how there are index values assigned to every item in a list, right? So that we, we could see if we had just all of our points on one branch all the way at the end, right, they'd have just one thing attached to them, one index value, and that's here, right? So there's all this world for us to explore during the webinar. Okay, so data trees. Right? Um, just to give a little bit of technical background, a tree, spelled T-R-I-E, is an ordered data structure in which elements are stored, and stored with and accessed by a key. That sounds like a list, but a list only, the key is only the index. It's a single value. With a tree, a key can be anything. You can call Gil, which is my name, that's my key on how to access me. Or any of your names uh, could be your key for how we access you. In the same way, our points can have keys associated with them. And Grasshopper, its data trees, actually fall within this category of tree, or sometimes it's pronounced try. Right? Um, so the basics of a, a data tree, or uh, a tree, try, is, uh, would look like a diagram like this. Right? There is a kind of base level and a series of uh, links to elements each time increasing the amount of keys that are attached to it. So if we wanted to spell the letter 2, starting from empty space, we would say first type the letter T, then type the letter O. That gets you to 2, T-O. Right? So it's hierarchical in that you can move up and down through the data structure based on the keys and the predecessor keys. All right, now that's, that's a little technical, um, but that's the kind of background to where data trees with Grasshopper um, uh, come from. All right, so as of Grasshopper 0 0.6, which is now a couple years old, we're well past 0 0.6, before there weren't, but now there are data trees. Data can be stored in hierarchical structures as opposed to just simple lists, not too dissimilar to the analogy of a branching tree. So data is still stored in lists, but now each list has an associated path. That path is our key. And the path is just a series of indices describing the position of that data inside the tree. OK, so let's bounce back over to Grasshopper and, and figure out what all of that means. All right, so uh, I'm going to save this as 1-1, um, working, or just dash w, so I don't overwrite my original file. And I'm going to stick with just the uh, last portion here. So you can delete this if you want, or just make sure that all the previews are open. OK. So the key here is that we want to go not from uh, two sets of values that are describing the coordinates of our grid, but we want to go, uh, we want to create data that's structured so that we can have a more organized grid where we can find rows and columns very easily. 
All right, so the key thing here is that we're going to replace this guy, the cross-reference. So I'm going to delete it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sets tree drop-down. And this tab is where we're going to be spending most of our time today. Um, and before we even kind of look at all the different elements that are here, let's just go ahead and grab the second object on the right, the graft. Okay, now this object is called the graft. It's a really simple object. And what it asks for is whatever you want to graft. So let's take our X coordinates, which we might label here with a group. I'll make sure these are my X values so that we're clear on what these things are, X values and Y values. So here are my X values. I'm going to connect them to the graft. I'm going to put my mouse over the T output. Notice if you look at the output of the series, it just says nine locally defined values and it tells us what they are. If you put your mouse over T, it says nine locally defined values, but there's something else present there in the preview. So something's changed. Um, we'll come back to exactly what's happening here in a second. But just so that we can see what the result is, let's connect the graph into X and keep Y values going into Y. So now, instead of a one big long list of points, we now have columns of points. And I'm just going to drop in a little slider here to increase the font size so that you guys can see this a little bit better on your end. I think that should be better. Zero to nine. Zero to nine. Zero to nine. So instead of going zero to eight, and then ten, uh, nine to 17, which I think is how it was before, we're going to go zero to nine each time. Right? For each of the x values, we're going to create a row based on the y values. Okay. So now, if we look at the panel that's coming out, it's no longer a list of points. What do you think we have? Go ahead and, if you have an idea, type an answer into the message window and give us a suggestion on what you think you see here. Is it one value or one point? Is it a list of points? Or is it something else? And if so, how would you describe it? All right, so one person said it's an array of points. I think that that's, that's correct, although um, we can think about it slightly differently in Grasshopper. Um, an array might not necessarily describe how things are ordered, right? In this case, we have definitely a list of lists. So here we have one list of points. And another person said a table that's also very close uh, to being specific to the terminology of Grasshopper. Table, uh, you can think of that as an Excel spreadsheet, right, if you have rows and columns. Um, so that's also uh, correct. But here we essentially have a list of lists. Grasshopper understands each one of these things to be a list, but they're organized in a new structure where we can have multiple lists. Right, so if we scroll through the panel, we no longer just have one big long list. Each list is split by the dark band with some number here that uh, is new, which we'll come back to. And each one has the same number of points, 0 to 9, going through every list. So now we don't have just a list of points. We have a list of lists of points. All right, great responses there. So now we've just created our first data tree, All right? And again, maybe some of this might start to seem a little bit more familiar now. In the case that we just had, it doesn't correspond exactly to this, but each one of our columns of points was located on the tip of a branch of our data tree. Okay, so um, data trees can also be represented in a different way. Um, not just by the kind of uh, panel view, but by a param viewer. So let's go back into Grasshopper, and let's go to params, utility, param viewer. Let's drop that in and connect our list of points. 
right? So this says data with nine branches. It has this uh, funny set of values that we identified before over here in the panel. And then it has the n equals 10. That means that there are 10 points on every branch. So the nice thing about the Pram Viewer is you can double click it and now we get a representation of the tree that looks more like a tree. So here we have a, uh, another way to understand that each one of these um, ending locations on the data structure, the tree, stores a list of points. Okay, and those trees can look pretty differently based on what you've done in your file. Here are some examples of the different uh, so a few different data trees that you can generate pretty quickly and we'll, be, we'll have data trees that look like this uh, for the rest of the webinar. Okay, the other thing to note is that when we created our data tree, we got something new in terms of the preview on the canvas. We got the representation of the fancy wires, or at least hopefully we did. To double check that you have your fancy wire display turned on, go to display, draw fancy wires. So now we have this dashed line that describes that instead of just a list, which is two lines, we now have a list of lists or a data tree. Right? So after the graph, all the other objects that inherited data from the graph and thereafter are represented with this double dashed line. Okay, so just to reiterate that the fanciness of the wire um, is an indicator of the data flowing through it in terms of how it's organized. And here we have uh, the representation of a single item passing through, a list, a double dashed line means that's a data tree, and orange means um, there's nothing passing through it. 